So as everyone knows, the Oscar nominations were revealed this past week. So Christian and I have gotten together again. And today the topic is who we would ultimately pick to win out of the ones that were nominated. We're going to be going through the main eight categories. You know, Siskel and Ebert used to like rent out Disney World for a night. So then they can do this in like tuxedos. All dressed up and no place to go. We don't make Oscar predictions. We say... Who should win? We need to bring that back. No, I think what they would ultimately have done if given the option was go inside of a basement and have a <laughs> card table and then drink some beers. I would say this was the next best thing, but they also used to conduct business from a movie theater set. Yeah, we need to get one of those. We do. <laughs> what are we doing? Anybody out there who's looking for a job, we will hire you to make us a movie theater set. That sounds great. Out of pure vanity. They were the best. Ugh, lordy. Right. We were the only two guys voting for the Oscars. This is who would win this year. We're going to talk about on this special show. So to start, we will be discussing adapted screenplay. The nominees are American Fiction, Barbie, Oppenheimer, Four Things, and The Zone of Interest. Out of those, who do you think should win? I kind of get the vibe that this year they might try to spread the wealth. I'm going to try to do the same. For this one, I'm going with Poor Things, which is written by Tony McNamara, who also wrote The Favorite. This is just a great screenplay. This movie is doing a lot of what Barbie is doing. I just think it does it better. I find this movie very funny. It doesn't give a f and I just think that's great. More of that at the Oscars, please. I agree with you there. If I were to pick who I think should win, I think I would go with Oppenheimer just because yeah. it is kind of crazy how well it was adapted mm -hmm. for the visual medium that is film mm -hmm. and just the way it's structured I think is really impressive because I guess some people don't think the third act is that good but I think ultimately that's one of the stronger parts of the movie mm -hmm. and I think that's by design and the way that it's made in that maybe some people going in were expecting more of a focus on the actual bomb explosion mm -hmm. but then the real story really doesn't even happen until the third act. Yes, it's true. I'm glad you picked that. Because that's probably the one, but... You're trying to spread the wealth, I get yes. it. But yeah, but like, thing. it's also crazy that Christopher Nolan wrote all of that himself. <laughs> his brother wasn't on that one? No, oh, it, it's normally just... Normally he is, right? Uh, his brother's been too busy doing TV. But like, he's normally credited, right? Or no? It switches, like okay. Inception he wrote by himself, Interstellar, and Dark Knight he wrote with his brother but then Dunkirk is a solo Tenet is a solo and this one is as well yeah no he wrote this movie by himself and he conceived it the whole conception is him and all that dialogue not that you can't say that about some of these other movies because I bet you can. Yeah. But like, I mean, this is just super ambitious in mm -hmm. over undertaking of the fact that it is three hours and it is like a very well-known thing. Mm -hmm. And I, that's also partially why I feel like it's crazy that Scorsese and team are not nominated in this category. Mm -hmm. So that even more so lends me to pick Christopher Nolan here. I probably would have thrown my bone to Scorsese if he were on this category. Which is kind of wild because I think I would agree but, like, I've heard a lot of people say that the weakest part of the movie is the screenplay, which I think baffles oh, me. because what? Yeah, that's just what, just from listening to random podcasts that I listen to, that's what people are acting like. And I think that that's crazy just because the sheer fact that the last scene exists, I think to me, proves that the screenplay is really brilliant in terms mm -hmm. of who would have thought to do that. I heard so much about what went into that adaptation and the changes that Scorsese brought to it. And they were just like, nah. Out of all these, I, I would have probably kicked out Barbie for it, but like, Barbie does deserve a screenplay nomination. But yeah, I would a thousand and bajillion percent rather have seen a Martin Scorsese nominated. It was a tough one. I would need to read the novel that it was based on, but I also thought these are each very, like, and I haven't even read any of the source materials. Well, Barbie is a toy, but I haven't read, read those. I have not. <laughs> have you ever yeah. read the back of her box? I no. <laughs> well, damn. Genuinely, <laughs> that's a bit of an oversight. It would seem quite simple. I know, right? No, never, never engaged. But I was gonna say the zone of interest. I thought that was a very interesting piece of adaptation. I don't think you can really go wrong yeah. with those five. Like or... all of these are very deserving <laughs> in their own unique ways, yeah. in which I think 
makes it cool that the Oscars pretty much did a pretty good job this year, I feel like. Yeah, but, I mean, it was tough. Would I definitely change a couple things? Sure. But yeah, yeah, like this category, all more than deserving here. Agreed. Okay. Moving on to original screenplay, the nominees are Anatomy of a Fall, The Holdovers, Maestro, May December, and Past Lives. Who do you think should win here? This is a banger of a category. I mean, they couldn't have done it better. I mean, there's maybe an option that your mileage may vary with, but I am in on all of those. I'm going with Past Lives, which I think is the best of those movies. I think everything about that movie is, like, really perfect, and it sucks that it only has two nominations. To me, like, a flawless screenplay from somebody who had never made a movie. She just conceived all of that. She's never made anything before. You watch it, and it has such confidence And also, again, it's just a very rich screenplay in which you leave it and you just think about your life and your past life and all of that. And I know I sound dumb right now. You're not going to sound dumber than anything I say. I've said (laughs) so much about that movie since I saw it in June that, like, I'm just kind of, I'm out of gas. I don't know. That is more than deserving winner. When I look at these, I think... My personal pick here would be Anatomy of a Fall. Cool. Just because I think that, once again, this is maybe a silly pattern that I've picked these last two with, but once again, the third act, I think, is just awesome and just really well structured. Mm -hmm. And I said that literally a couple of minutes ago about Oppenheimer, but I think that's kind of what really sticks out to me here and the way they utilize the flashbacks. It seamlessly works, especially with the way that the courtroom works over there versus over here to where it just seems like it's just brilliantly utilized and that I think the way that the moment is worked on with the boy at the end, that movie doesn't work if that speech and that scene doesn't Mm -hmm. work. It just really worked for me. It's just got so much going on where, you know, it all the time. You can watch it and 100% believe that it happened this way or that way and it works both ways like yes. like you can either you know just continue not knowing what's going on or you can have yourself predetermined on like oh she did it or no it mm-hmm. was a complete accident and it just works really well with that and I think it would be a nice way to reward that movie I think that is the way that movie will be rewarded well it's not this show but like also it's a great screenplay <laughs> all of them are but yeah it's I mean like- or I Now is the moment in the video where (laughs) I point out that I do not like Maestro and that I would have nominated something else. You are not alone. You are not alone on that. I think Maestro is fascinating, but I don't... I I think if you could get rid of one in this five, it's that one. But also, I think that screenplay is really interesting. But Anatomy of a Fall, from its opening minutes. You know, like, a lot of court movies depend upon, like, the person on the stand being able to recall how certain events went down. And you know, like, that. what I find so interesting about that movie is that is, in a way, part of what it's about. The movie is unfolding in its opening five minutes, and you got PIMP playing upstairs, you have a conversation between two women going on, you got the son with the dog going outside, you got the husband working upstairs, and you're like, if you go into it knowing what the movie's about, you're like, oh, okay, but this is already disorienting. But, like, she does this thing where, like, she makes all of these details memorable. But yet, if you were there in the moment, such as Sandra's character and her son, you know, like, things might be different than they remember. You know, things might have been out of the ordinary. And, like, it's a very meticulous screenplay, that one. It really is. It's a movie that, similar to my pick, I think they stick the landing with from beginning to end. It's a rich text. Both movies as well, I would say. Because, like... I gotta say, I left both movies and I thought about them. And you know, yeah, <laughs> I and love that. <laughs> and there's plenty of movies all that were nominated that you can say that about. And uh-huh. that's why I feel really good about this year. Close second for me would be May, December. I have to shout it out since it's only nominated here. Another 
rich text <laughs> and a movie I thought about long after I saw it. Next nomination is Best Supporting Actress, Emily Blunt, Oppenheimer, Danielle Brooks, The Color Purple, America Ferreira, Barbie, Jodie Foster, Nyad, and Devine Joy Randolph, The Holdovers. This one is pretty obvious, I think, what's gonna win, but in terms of us personally, who would you pick of these? All right, so with my own personal awards, I cheated. Cheat! I put Lily Gladstone in Supporting Actress. Because... Because you cheated? The Oscars have done this. They often put, like, Rachel Weisz in the favorite in Supporting, and so oftentimes I have Oscar brain, and that's how my brain works. Even though she's going in lead, I'm like, well, is she? And yeah, she is. But is she? That's just what they do. I'm going with Davine because I think that's genuinely a supporting actress performance. It's a great performance. It's essentially a trio with her, Giamatti, and Dominic Sessa. I think she completes that trio. She brings like a lot of heart to it. You know, she's a little more brief, I would say, than Sessa and Giamatti, but at the same time, she makes her moments really count. The perfect definition of a supporting actress performance, it, it's actually, it is close for me. Just looking at that lineup, Maybe if Julianne Moore was here, I would teeter toward that. But Jodie Foster <laughs> is so good in that movie. You could twist my arm, but I don't know. I think I go with Davine. Yeah, uh, in my own personal picks, I think I have Rachel McAdams for Are You There, Got It to Me, yeah. Margaret, for winning this. Because you're not a cheater. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I play by the rules. Yeah. And that's probably why I'm so successful. Of the nominees, though, on this one, I 100% agree with Christian. I would be so super tempted to give it to Jodie Foster just because I think that movie is just super forgettable if it's not her. And I obviously, even with her, a lot of people still say that movie is super forgettable. But I was one of the bigger fans of that movie and I liked her and Benning and mm -hmm. their back and forth. And I thought that really made me super invested in the movie, yeah. which might be a crazy thing to say, but that's my opinion. That movie is star power. Yeah. Bam. And, and I'm like, a sucker for that. I found its story interesting. Yeah. It's just the direction is kind of like, like I hated the flashbacks. Like I was just like, yeah, this is bad. But yeah. yeah, I mean like, but it is like a Jodie Foster and Annette Benning, like two amazing actresses. Yeah. carrying a movie. It's a perfect two-hander. Mm -hmm. like, Riza Fons, I thought was really good in it yes. for his like third, third role mm -hmm. there. But yeah, I think you've got to give it to Davine, like here. I mean, she's been winning all the awards, so it's stupid to just reiterate that. But like, she's she's the one that's gonna win. She's mm -hmm. the one that should win yeah. of these five. The other one I would shout out for sure is Danielle Brooks. I think she yeah. was really excellent in the brief screen time that movie. And I had not knowingly seen her anywhere else, and she mm -hmm. really stood out to me because it was some hard work going mm -hmm. from happy moment to like utterly the most devastating thing you've ever seen. Yeah, kind of a thing mm -hmm. where she has that. One scene it's so where good. she ends up in jail. Yeah. And if you've seen the movie, you know what I'm talking about. It would be a hard thing to pull off, and she did. And she that's did. one of the many reasons why the movie worked for me. I like the other two performances as well. I'm personally like America Ferreira, get out of here. But that's one of the only nominations where I'm like, okay, I'm kind of <sighs> confused about this. Julianne Moore. <laughs> like anybody. Come on. Penelope Cruz. I don't know. But, and, like, she's a good actress in her own right, but, yeah, it's just it just was a really weird left-field nomination that yeah. was rumored some months it ago, was, it but was then brewing. I thought it went away. Yeah. And then all of a sudden I was like, nope, you should have remembered that it was brewing. It should, should have known. We, we forgot I know. we did not mention that in the other video. Yeah. I think the Emily Blunt performance is good, too. It actually it gets better on repeated viewings because, like, the first time you watch the movie... You're just so overwhelmed by the sound and the spectacle and the Killian Murphy. And she just kind of gets lost in there despite like one scene. But I think she's good in that too. 
it's just I don't know. It's a Christopher Nolan woman, which those aren't always great. She's decent. <laughs> yeah, but she does. Whenever they need the moment to hit in the third act with her, it really, really hits. Yes, because Emily mm-hmm. Blunt is so good. They she literally comes off the bench. Sports analogy here. Judicial analogy. <laughs> yeah. You know. <laughs> I guess, I guess it works. Either way. <laughs> Moving on, we have best supporting actor. The nominees are Sterling K. Brown, American. American Fiction, Robert De Niro, Killers of the Flower Moon, Robert Downey Jr., Oppenheimer, Ryan Gosling, Barbie, and Mark Ruffalo for Poor Things. Now, my pick for this is going to be similar to last round. I think it's a thousand percent got to be Robert Downey Jr. because I think that's just an undeniable thing. I know the narrative is brilliantly built up in terms of pop culture Mm -hmm. and just how that goes, but I think genuinely just the movie, that's why I really liked the third act, even though people had critiques with it. I thought it really worked because it's like you're learning about this other really crazy thing that happened in terms of this through Robert Downey Jr.'s character and how despicable that whole thing was and just how in it for himself he was and Mm -hmm. it really comes off with the performance and has always been a great actor and he did great work in the Marvel movies but it's just really nice that he got to let it really shine here with a filmmaker like Nolan and in a role like this where it's about this big important thing and I Mm -hmm. think he more than deserves the win here. Totally. I would say about five years ago, I like stopped to look at his IMDb because he had just done like Civil War, Spider-Man, Infinity War, Endgame. And like I was looking at his IMDb and I was like, can he please do something else? And like he was great, but it was like that was all he did for about 10 years there. And then right after his stint as Iron Man, he does Doolittle. I was like me this is depressing because i know he's great and he was great as iron man i never felt like he was phoning it in i just know how good he can be and there it was in the final act of oppenheimer i mean like he's he's good throughout the whole thing but it is really in that final hour where you're like yeah this guy he has prevailed and persisted for this long for a reason And it was like, you can kind of tell watching him in this movie that he's been itching for something like this. A real role. (laughs) And he he knocks it out of the park. He really does. Before this, I feel like the last really good thing that he did other than the Iron Man stuff was, you know, The Judge. And I, I was going to say, I was, that movie worked for me, <laughs> me because too. it was him uh-huh. and it was Robert Duvall and they were both cooking. It's the only one in there. Like, it's, it? Okay. It, it really is. It's like Iron Man 2, Due Date, a Sherlock, Iron Man, yeah. Doolittle, this movie. He's going to be in like an HBO series directed by Park Chan-wook. That's really random. Yeah, it is. Good. I'll take it. You know, like he's been rumored to do a lot of things over the last ten years, like Inherent Vice, and I think he was just, you know, having a good time playing Iron Man. He was really good at it. But this this performance is the real deal. And in terms of the other nominations, they're all really good. Yeah. It's just I think this category is for me a clear cutaway of. It's got to be Robert Downey Jr. I think so, too. But I think they did as good of a job as I predicted they would. You predicted all of them, but that's not necessarily who you would have picked. No, uh, no. So, but, but yeah. We'll do another video later where it's will. Christian's Awards. Don't you have your own? Okay, I didn't know if you wanted. Yeah, I do, too. But, yeah, we can do both. Everybody has their own awards, but these are Christian's Awards, and they're going to be called <laughs> the CDAs. The CDAs. As they are lovingly called. To put it into perspective... Emily Blunt has one Oscar nomination, but she has three CDA nominations. See? I'm smart. (laughs) (laughs) But yeah, I'm really excited to get into that, and we'll definitely do one for this year. I'm really looking forward to, like, going back in the other years and seeing what Christian would have awarded compared to the Oscars. And it's been a fun, like, just reoccurring, you know, buddies getting together and drinking and um, just talking about that because it's a fun thing to talk about because I have my own awards now of course and oh i know now you they, do now they are called the bras <laughs> which of course says bra which <laughs> which is incredible <laughs> to put on the logo um, the bras <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and then instead of you know oscars they of course hand the bra and the bra goes yeah. to yeah. <laughs> and then, and then you've got you know some guys holding up there <laughs> with the bra and it's just a really great broadcast and we're really looking forward to showing it to you because we have had it on private 
tape record. Uh, is man. Killian Murphy coming this year? Oh, yeah. I mean, he's a big fan of the Bronx. Yeah, uh, okay. I feel like he's been nominated before. Uh-huh. Uh, and, but this year, he's winning. Uh, yeah. So, but a little bit of a spoiler, but this year, he, yeah. he won my Bra Award. I'm trying to get Robert Downey Jr. to come to mine, but he might be too busy coming to yours. But does he keep snubbing you? Huh? Does he keep snubbing you? No, but I know he's making the rounds, and he's got, like, an actual award to win. I don't know if I can get him to show up. Yeah, but. we'll see how it goes this year. I but. could probably get Bradley Cooper, though. <laughs> yeah, you definitely could. I, I will not, probably, because <laughs> I did not like this movie. Next, we have Best Actress, which was Annette Bening for Nyad, Lily Gladstone for Killers of the Flower Moon, Sandra Huller for Anatomy of a Fall, Carrie Mulligan for Maestro, and Emma Stone for Poor Things. This is obviously a big debate, but if Christian were to select the winner, who would he select? Well, obviously it's Annette Bening. No, I'm joking. Um, <laughs> but She's good, Ned. But uh, that's obviously the one that really probably shouldn't be there. I'm going with Emma Stone. It's really Stone v. Gladstone, who will be winning the Best Supporting Actress CDA this year. No doubt. <laughs> I'm going with Emma Stone. Because I think this is her best performance. She won an Oscar about eight years ago for a performance that I just did not think was Oscar worthy. I think it was nomination worthy. And I love La La Land. But it should have been Natalie Portman for Jackie. I've held a grudge since. And I've been waiting to reward her. And the time has come. Because who's doing this? <laughs> like, I've seen this movie twice. Who is doing this? This is... Commitment. It is a tour de force performance in which she starts out playing an infant in a woman's body and then <laughs> goes on a path of self discovery. F***ing. <laughs> and. <laughs> <Lots of> <laughs> yes, the, the human experience. <laughs> and it's an incredible performance. I don't know if she's winning the Oscar, it's a tough call. But this is, like, really impressive stuff. It's what I respond to. I can't help myself. I think I'm ultimately going to have to agree with you, and I think I would give it to Emma Stone, but if they give it to Lily Gladstone, Absolutely. I will not be upset at all. I feel like this year it's more of a straight-up 1A, 1B mm -hmm. thing, and so I will not be mad either way. I'm obviously a very massive Emma Stone fan. I have been for a while. That was a formative standing mm -hmm. um, yes um going into high school and yeah so i've literally seen every one of her movies and i think i would pick her and that's a little bit biased but like i said if it's lily gladstone super happy for her because i feel like that movie is not getting nearly the love that it deserves and she's an essential part of that movie and yeah. why it was made and just she really excelled in her role there she is sensational i, I rewatched it again and like i know i am a dummy and i put her in supporting actress because i wanted to you know i was like I get the you vibe. You want to reward both, though. Because, like... I do. Because, like, like if, I if, do. if I was allowed to do that, it's like... Here's yeah, the thing. Uh, who are the other nominees here? Also good ones. Annette Benning, who, of course... You know, is could the, be the one that was left out of for the other movie. people, but yes. she's but she's great in it, mm -hmm. and she's been great forever, obviously. Um, Sandra Huller for yes. Anatomy of Fall, and after seeing that movie, I was like, I think I'm gonna give it to her. And yeah. it's like, you know, you come out of the theater with strong reactions. Mm -hmm. And that was definitely one of those cases. She's definitely nominated, in my opinion. Carrie Mulligan, fantastic in that movie. I'm not a big fan of the movie, so I think I would have picked somebody else over her just because in terms of rewarding a movie that I didn't vibe with necessarily. As a person, you don't really do that. It's so, the Rustin vote but she's for great. me. Yeah, but she's great. I get you. Yeah. All great performances this year, I would have. Mm -hmm put Margot Robbie or Greta Lee in over in that yeah. thing. But, mm -hmm. uh, but yeah, not, not, not an issue. Well, what I was going to say is I feel like I can realistically put Lily Gladstone <laughs> in supporting because mm -hmm. she is one of the main characters. One performance that people often cite is like Jennifer Connelly for A Beautiful Mind. You know, like she's kind of the lead of that movie, but... Is she, you know? And so my Oscar brain goes to that. But also, it is very much her movie in terms of Killers of the Flower Moon. So, like, I get why she is in lead. But also, yeah, like you said, I want to reward both. She would be winning. Well, her and Dave Vine maybe might have some competition there. But she would be chugging along. I think she still 
has a good chance. But for sure, I, I, d- I definitely just want to reward both personally. <laughs> yeah, this is definitely one of the tougher races. Next, we have Best Actor, which is Bradley Cooper for Maestro, Coleman Domingo for Rustin, Paul Giamatti, The Holdovers, Killian Murphy, Oppenheimer, and Jeffrey Wright, American Fiction. I'm honestly having the hardest time with this one. Obviously, in my book, it's a two-way tough race, even though... It I like per- I like all these pretty much. I haven't seen Rustin, but like I, Coleman's I wonderful, know. but that movie's not good enough. I'm gonna go with Giamatti. When I left that movie, I was like, he has to be nominated, right? Like, because I was just in my mind, I was like, because I hadn't seen Maestro yet, I didn't know how people really felt about it, but I was like, oh, it's got to be Murphy v. Cooper, and I was like. I get this vibe that they'll snub Giamatti once again because they did for Sideways. And I was just, I loved that performance. Like, I really did, and I was just really rooting for him. And that's not why I'm going for it, but it is the most enjoyable of these performances. Whereas maybe Killian gives the better performance, but I rewatched The Holdovers again a couple weeks ago. He's really doing a lot in that movie, and it's all really impressive. He's really funny, and yet, like, he captures, like, the lonely soul who is, like, an angry bastard who really has a heart of gold deep down, but he's just been hurt too much, and, like, and there's no flashbacks or anything in this movie either. You just know that about this person and maybe part of that's the writing but i feel like a lot of it is the giamatti performance itself that's where i go yeah by a smidge but yeah for me this is just as tied as best actress i'm gonna personally go on the other side of the coin Mm -hmm. with killian murphy winning but all those points you said were great i think that he's been such a good actor for so long both Mm -hmm. both of them but yeah killian murphy i think you just i will ever remember leaving the theater and just seeing the conversation at the end of the movie and then it's really just hard cuts Mm -hmm. to uh, reaction and you're just looking into oppenheimer's face that was just the perfect little note at the end of the movie that encapsulated the entire performance Mm -hmm. and you can tell on his face just how he's feeling every every scene and I just really, I don't know. And like, you can say the same exact things about Paul Giamatti's, which is why this is so silly to to reward art. I think I would go with Murphy just because of my personal experience yeah. with it. And this is my personal pick. You I, just follow the movie for three hours because he's so good in it. Yeah. And I don't know. Not that, it, that he didn't have a great cast to work with. But he's yeah. absolutely astonishing. Yeah. Like, it, I, I feel like we're both right. It's another case where it's like, you know, at the end of Mean Girls, how she has the crown and she like breaks it into pieces and she like throws it to the other nominees that i wish uh, we could yeah. just do that yeah. with the oscar here and just you know here's the head for bradley cooper <laughs> and here's the torso for paul giamatti like kelly murphy what is unique about that performance i feel like a lot of oppenheimer is just like this grand achievement it is like a spectacle and like a filmmaker's bold vision, and yet there's all these great small performances in it, and at the center of it is Killian Murphy. And like a lot of what he does in that movie is facial expressions. You are seeing everything the way that he is seeing it. It's gotta be really hard. Considering the fact he has this incredible cast around him, He's still weirdly carrying the movie on his shoulders, which is no small feat. I have I don't know how the Oscar voters are gonna go, but I think you're right. I also think I'm right too. Then we have Best Director, which is Jonathan Glazer, The Zone of Interest, Yorgos Lanthimos, Poor Things, Christopher Nolan, Oppenheimer, Martin Scorsese, Killers of the Flower Moon, Justin Trier, Anatomy of a Fall. My personal pick, it's a really hard category because there's two absolute giants who've been making movies that we've all loved for years. Not that these other directors haven't made their share of really, really great movies, but I just feel like if I got to choose, I would choose personally Martin Scorsese. And it's really tough because the obvious runner-up for me here would be Christopher Nolan, but I feel like he'll be plenty rewarded in other spots, like I gave him the screenplay award in my Mm -hmm. personal pick of these. And I just feel like it's just crazy just how loved this movie is, Killers of the Flower Moon, in retrospect to how many nominations it got in certain places where it could have very well gotten nominated. I know it got 10-plus nominations 
but ultimately it was snubbed. Still snubbed. In a couple places yeah, where it could have gotten more. And the fact that there is zero momentum for this movie to really win anything, to where it could be easily another Irishman situation where it just doesn't win anything at all. I know. Um, which is crazy. That was brutal. Yeah. So I just think, personally, if this was one thing I could do on this earth, I would select Martin Scorsese to win this award. And that's no slight against Nolan, but... That's my pick here. I get you. So, shout out to Peter Travers. In his 10 best of the year, he said both Killers of the Flower Moon and Oppenheimer. (laughs) And he was like, I can't pick. (laughs) And I totally get that. I really do. Last year, when the Everything Everywhere sweep happened, and I've actually said this for like two years now, but I was like, Martin Scorsese needs to win an Oscar. I'm out. But my pick is Christopher Nolan. (laughs) Um, I'm sorry. I am who I am. Um, I'm with Peter Travers on, like, I don't know how to pick between the two. Because I think both movies are magnificent achievements. From, again, as you said, two filmmakers who have been making absolute bops for years. I just think... While it's not my favorite, I do think this is Christopher Nolan's best movie. I think it is the ultimate fusion and summation of everything that has interested him. It's pretty much him at the peak of his powers here. And it is just like the Trinity Test, for example. Like, that is... That's the movies, man. Like, that. that is powerful stuff. It's like the climax of the movie... It's weirdly thrilling, even though you know that, like, everybody's going to be fine. (laughs) But, like, then there's a whole other hour after that. It's like the climax of the movie. This movie is incredibly impressive. And so is Killers of the Flower Moon. It's really hard. But how often is it that a director is recognized for their best movie? It's usually, like, 20 years too late. In my opinion, my favorite movie of his is The Dark Knight. So again, we're like 15 years late, but this is, I think, like him really cooking with gas, and I, I have, to, I have to give it to him. I'm not going to be upset at all if, if they give it to Christopher Nolan here. Obviously, uh, the other nominees are all amazing. They are in terms of what they did this year, like Jonathan Glazer. We just saw some <laughs> interest yesterday, and um, what my, a picture! <laughs> my mental state is still reeling from it. Yep. And um, yeah, he's obviously been really good and experimental uh, here or there. Um, Under the past. skin, that thing is whack. Yeah, like, <laughs> like you can tell, this guy's an original, and it is well deserved his nomination, and he did incredible work this year too. Yorgos Lanthimos for Poor Things. Hell yeah! Uh, like <laughs> Christian did a good job spreading his wealth by giving Poor Things the screenplay nomination. <laughs> he didn't write it, but it's his movie. Justine Trier, we already sung the praises of Anatomy of a Fall with me picking the screenplay award for that. All these nominees did great work, but yeah, I just feel like if we get a chance to reward Christopher Nolan or Martin Scorsese here, I think we could, we should do it. Yeah. Like, I don't know, because Nolan hasn't won anything. He nope. won a screenplay or no? He's never won an Oscar. Nolan hasn't won anything yet. And then Scorsese only has the one win for Be- for The Departed, which now people act like is not a good movie because it was the one. He that won was for. the one, and I know it's yeah. such a bummer. Like I, and like The Departed rips. Like let's be real here. Is it his best movie? I don't necessarily think so, but that's just because they f***ed up. They're always late. Spielberg winning for Schindler's List. Like that's an amazing movie. Like, uh, that, is a, that is a real, that is a career achievement. It's just not my favorite movie of his. And again, it's like, how often do these people win for their best movie? In terms of Scorsese, I don't know how many movies he has left. And I feel like he has to win something. So, like, when I saw he wasn't nominated for screenplay, I was like, it's a real bummer. It really is. Yeah. Obviously, he's been making great work for years, so he could care less Consistently. about winning an, a silly award at a mm-hmm. silly award show. Yeah. But like, it would just be cool, you know, to see him up on there on stage and you know at the stage in his life and accept it. Martin Scorsese is so consistently good that people act like Hugo is bad, and I'm Which like. Is- baffling it's bananas the movie's won 
wonderful. Yeah, we'll save a lot of this talk for. I'm sure we'll do a filmography rundown slash ranking. We got uh, to. of Martin Scorsese because I've been wanting to do it for a while. <laughs> And then the last of the big ones is Best Picture, and your nominees were American Fiction, Anatomy of a Fall, Barbie, The Holdovers, Killers of the Flower Moon, Maestro, Oppenheimer, Past Lives, Poor Things, and The Zone of Interest. Now, obviously, a lot of nominees here. What would we pick as the Best Picture for the year? A great year for movies, as previously Disgust. Phenomenal. Phenomenal. Ah, I can't lie. I'm going to go with Oppenheimer. This movie is three hours long, and it's filled with talking and science. And I have seen it three times. <laughs> I saw it once in IMAX. I saw it the second time in 70 millimeter IMAX. And then Ooh. the third time I saw it at my house. And you know what? The thing just really moves. I'm just always impressed by it. It's also oddly rewatchable. Like, considering the grim and despair nature of its story, the scene right after they they build the bomb and he's, like, in the auditorium and there's, like, the screams and it... it, it scares me every time. Like, it really rattles me. Again, I want people to know, science is not something that I find interesting, but it's all just really phenomenal stuff. Incredible. It really does have, like, among the year's best performances, and you could easily do a ranking of the performances in this movie. That's how good they are, and that's how good, like, even somebody like Casey Affleck is for like three minutes. This is a great movie, an achievement. So is Killers of the Flower Moon, and so is Past Lives. They did a really good job here. At the risk of sounding boring, I 1000% agree that Oppenheimer should win Best Picture this year if I had to pick one that will 100% look the best, like over time. It will. And just like even my personal ranking feeling, obviously I have a similar issue with uh, Peter Travers did, where <laughs> I'm kind of like battling back and forth in my mind of Oppenheimer versus Killers of Flower Moon, but I think I just keep going back to Oppenheimer. I mean, this is a really, really good movie that makes you feel like shit. Haunting. Afterwards. Yes, absolutely haunting. haunting. And that night, I will not forget. Obviously, I did the silly Barbenheimer thing <laughs> where I saw Oppenheimer first, and then later on I saw oh. Barbie, and I was still just... You're just absolutely reeling after Oppenheimer, and no matter what the heck, how fun and colorful Barbie is, you're just going to feel weird as hell after finishing Barbie just because of how you feel after finishing Oppenheimer. So I feel like 100%, especially just the way it has been in the year of movies this year, the fact it made as much money as it did being in a biopic about Robert J. Oppenheimer that had black and white sequences forever that people, sometimes some people will look at you and be disgusted to know that people watch black and white movies, which of course I yeah. I love and like, you know, Christian obviously enjoys too, but like your general person will look at you and be like, that has no color in it. And they'll just completely disregard some of the greatest movies ever made because of that. And the fact that this movie made that much money is so amazing and I feel like doesn't get talked about enough how big of a deal that is. It's a miracle. Yes. Ridiculous. It is unbelievable that this day and age, this movie was as successful as it was, but like, that's, that's Christopher Nolan, man. And, like, nothing against the other nominees. Eight out of ten of these movies were so very firmly in my top 20 of the year. Yeah. Like, this was a really good year for the movies, and I feel like they actually awarded some good stuff that a lot mm -hmm. of people have seen, slash a lot of people have seen if they are interested enough to seek these things out. Because these movies have been in the ether of people that actually like mm -hmm. to see these, you know, big movies, these big art pieces that people think, are making. And I, I think feel the, like this is a really good year. I think the tide is turning, man. You know, like, there was quite a few people at the Zone of Interest last night. Yeah, um, it was nice to see, but also terrifying because all of us had to walk into that theater again. <laughs> and yeah. It was, like, what on earth? Like, it was, it was just, I was... Uh, go see it if it's yeah. in your area because yeah, yeah that's just it, yeah it's, it's awful but but great a good amount of people yeah. in American fiction 
Yeah, also, know, yeah. Poor Things has been creeping into the top ten for a couple of weeks. I think it's still expanding a bit. Yeah. Like Walkout tickets account, too. Yeah. What's that? Walkout tickets count, too. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm sure. I, yeah, I'm sure. There's a couple I, of I, I, didn't, I didn't necessarily experience them in our, our viewing, but yeah. You I did every, Everyone's heard people walking out, blah, blah, blah. Um, who knows uh, who these people are, so, but it'll be interesting. It's a uh, weird yeah, sell. Just just a great year, and like Holdovers, that's got to be like a Christmas classic moving forward, and just a really great movie with throwback to the 70s. Like, I mean, yeah, all these movies are great. I don't think we really left anything out. Like, I mean, I just think Oppenheimer's clear and way Best Picture winner, even though it is. there's it, so many it, 10 out of 10 movies from this year. Yeah, I agree. I would say I have like eight of these in my top 20. Um, That's what I said, yeah. Yeah. I mean, yeah. yeah, I made it easy in my top twenty for sure. All right, so those are our picks of what should win the big eight categories at the Oscars this year from what is nominated. What do you all think should win based on what is nominated? Who are you rooting for? Really interesting year. I feel like not too many bad winners this year. There's no real possibility of that. So no. I'm really kind of sort of looking forward to spending three hours of my life watching an award show. So anyway, uh, if you like this, then thank you. Do the like and subscribe thing, I guess, so that I know that you did. We'll be talking more in future videos because that's what this channel is. If you have suggestions on video topics or something you want to see us make, then let us know because we will more than likely do that. But yeah, next time we get eh. together. More, not 100%. If your idea is really stupid, <laughs> we won't do it. But if, if I'm interested in it enough, then I will 1,000% try to do it. It just has Even to be like a good idea. Right, yeah. If it's something me and Christian can slash want to talk about, we will do that. That's what we have to say. And... Thank you. Well, it's my privilege. Thank you.